Hey, what's up? I'm comedian impressionist Marcus and welcome back to First Impressions where every time I'm gonna quickly break down a different impression and teach you how to try to do voices for yourself. And in this episode, we're gonna break down the vocal eccentricities of a voice that is actually harder to get right than it sounds. One of my all time favorite quirky voiced actors, the incomparable and always interesting, uh, Jeff Goldblum, mmm, fascinating. <laughs> Now, I am a huge Goldblum fan, as many of you probably also are. I personally love his unique approach to dialogue and his unapologetic dedication to really just being himself in every role that he plays. And while he does have a unique voice uh, and distinct delivery and easy to mimic mannerisms that tend to lend to a lot of Goldblum impressions. Thanks for being here, Jeff, how are you? I'm good, I'm very good, but also exhilarated. Yes, yes, um, I feel free. Uh, like Sam the world, look at me, let's go, catch me if you can. I didn't mean to, uh, oh, I don't mean to assume, but uh, I was hoping you would uh, ask me to do Jeff Goldblum. Great disciple. impersonator, is that my, uh, is that your Jeff Goldblum? Uh, uh, what do you think, uh, what do you know, uh, oh my gosh. Um... Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, but uh, he might throw his desktop monitor out the window. Jeff Goldblum, name this object. Yes, uh, thank you. That's a, um, uh, what do you call it when you, um, when you, when you punish criminals in uh, days of yore? It was, um, and you'd put them in the, uh, the square in those, you, you know. Uh, you mean in the stocks or a pillory? Yes, exactly. It's a frigging hammer. <laughs> this isn't really a stock impression like some of the ones we've dealt with. Not everyone who does voices has a great Goldblum, right? And it's probably because his voice and mannerisms, again, while one of a kind and seemingly simple to mimic, they're not as easy as they sound to get right. So let's break down a basic Goldblum impression. Okay, so when it comes to a Goldblum impression, uh, most people start with the spacing. Right, it's like he's always fascinated by everything. And even without doing the, the, the full voice and the eyes, just like with walking, if you start with some of the mannerisms, it's, you, people will know what you're doing. If you just start a sentence with, mm, uh, oh, ah, well, mm, just, mm, ha, right? People go, oh, you're doing Goldblum, right? Because that's, that's basically an impression. If you just do that, right? That's uh, uh, the, the impression in a nutshell. But then you throw in other things, um, the eyes and the hands. Mm, he's always doing big eyes, right? He's, mm, oh, ah, part of the fascinating fascination that he has with everything. Um, and then the hands, right? They're always, they're touching the face, they're touching each other. Uh, glasses, he has the glasses. So he's always, ah, touching the glasses. Mm, oh, ah, reaching, uh, re uh, mm, right? There's, and it's, again, it's clutched. It's not Captain Jack which we talked about, or it's bigger, and it's, you know, it's this, and we've still got the hands and whatnot. It's, mm, oh, ah, everything's here. So that is essentially the package that you then encapsulate the Goldblum impression in. Now, let's listen to Goldblum actually explain the impression for himself. I guess I do use my hand, that he was probably doing that. Um, yes, talking with my hands. Of course, he's got my glass, some kind of dark frame, which I still sport in one way or another. And then, of course, fumfring, a, a, a variation of fumfring. Uh, what do you call it when you... Um... <laughs> Not being able to come up with exactly, directly, succinctly what you want to say, but beating around the bush to try to find some thought, your mind is, as you're talking, your mind is actively still, you know, chewing on something, and it's less that you've got some rich inner mental life, that, but more that I, I, I hardly know, you know, what I'm talking about. Now, as you can see, he says a lot of the same things we do. It's the yammering, it's the thinking, the thoughtfulness, where am I going, what am I doing? Uh, I like to say that his voice is like jazz, right? He plays jazz, he's a jazz pianist, and that makes a lot of sense to me. Because with jazz, it's da-da, 
It's almost his voice, right? It's up, it's down, it's here, it's there. It doesn't really have um, uh, a melody that you can follow very easily, right? Like a pop song would. And that's much like his voice. Uh, right? It just sounds like a jazz song. Um, and not only that, but, and he also says it too. Sure enough, uh, guilty as charged. I'm singing up a storm. I sing all, all the time, and I add uh, anything that reminds me of a lyric of a song, I'll break into some song. So he's right on the money there. But he's very musical. That's so true what he says. He is a musical person because he plays and because he thinks and lives in kind of this musical, uh, when you think of the impression, mm, uh, it moves, it moves. Uh, there is uh, uh, flow and melody, mm, there's ups and, uh, and down. So you can kind of see that it's very musical and rhythmic. You can swim in it. Ah, oh, yeah. Mm, ah, mm, oh, mm, ah. Uh, fascinating, fascinating. What do we do? Uh, where is it? What? Ah, yes, indeed. Mm, oh, mm, ah. Right? So that's the essential nature of it. Now, where does it come from? Right? We've talked about this with other impressions. Uh, with me, this, because I can find it, because my voice, right, where I talk from here, here, is a very similar place to where he is. He's just slightly more nasally than I am. So uh, where I come, uh, you can even hear it right there in my voice as I, uh, I just kind of restrict it uh, back to the back of the throat and then push it up uh, into the nose mm, where he uh, resonates and uh, mm, ah, kind of making a flat sound from the back of your throat and then playing with it up and down. In fact, he has one of my favorite lines ever that has really actually I think explains him, but also explains so much about how to kind of understand dialogue. There's a great scene where he was a guest star on Friends and Joey comes in to audition with him and he asks Jeff Goldblum's character for uh, advice on acting. And he says, uh, uh, two things. Uh, number one, uh, you're so horizontal, don't be uh, afraid to explore uh, the vertical. Uh, and also, uh, don't learn the words, uh, let the words uh, learn you. And I think that's such a great explanation of how Jeff Goldblum looks at dialogue, right? First of all, most people think of a line as getting from the beginning to the end of it um, and not thinking about the ups and downs and the places you can go with it. It's not just saying, hey, what are you doing here? You know, it's saying, uh, hey, um, what, what are you uh, what are, uh, doing here? Right? He can, just, he can take a line that simple and just make it into something so much more complex. And also, don't learn the words, let the words learn you. That's exactly what he does. He doesn't take something that somebody wrote and said, let me figure out how that's written and say it that way. He says, how does that dialogue apply to who I am and how can I say it like that? And I think that's a fantastic way to look at anything, especially impressions, because um, like we said in the past, this isn't just about learning an impression that is, you know, this is the way it's done and boy, that's it. No, everybody can do their own. Just like walking into Nero, Jeff Goldblum has an extensive film career that includes some of my literal favorite movies and shows ever, uh, whether it's stealing scenes in some of my favorite TV shows like Friends, Portlandia, Tim and Eric Awesome Show, Great Job, love it, love it so much, or starring in amazing movies from small cult classics like The Fly to some of the biggest film franchises of all time like Jurassic Park, Independence Day, and most recently joining the Marvel Cinematic Universe in Thor Ragnarok. He always stands out just by being there and by being himself. And while there are a thousand great Goldblum lines from a hundred great Goldblum movies for us to choose to mimic, today we're gonna take on some of my absolute favorite classic Goldblum moments because this is my video. So in this first clip, I clearly picked Jurassic Park because why not? It's literally the biggest thing he's ever done. Sure, he was in Independence Day. Yes, he's joined the Marvel Cinematic Universe and all of the billions of dollars it's made. But Jurassic Park was not only a huge launching pad for him, but it was really like the first giant movie of its kind. Like that movie was from 1993 and those dinosaurs still look good. So does that scene of shirtless Jeff Goldblum, am I right? Both of those are amazing and they still hold up. 
And I love that movie. I absolutely love it, still watch it today. So let's take a look at a little clip from Jeff Goldblum being Jeff Goldblum in Jurassic Park. Uh, I think the Tyrannosaur uh, uh, doesn't have any set patterns or, or, or park schedules. It's the essence uh, of chaos. Um, I'm still not clear on chaos. Oh, oh, it, 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 it uh, simply uh, deals with uh, predictability in complex systems. The shorthand is the, the butterfly effect. A butterfly can flap its wings in Peking, and in Central Park, you get rain instead of sunshine. Why? <laughs> <laughs> and then I go too fast. I, I go too fast. I did a flyby. <laughs> He's so cool. Like, I feel like there was a whole generation of kids that were like, I want to be a scientist now. Are scientists this guy? Let's do that. Like, it was just such a cool character. And if you listen to that, that's where Jeff Goldblum, kind of the first half of Jeff Goldblum's career lived. Uh, there was higher, right? It was up here, high. Uh, you know, chaos theory, chaos theory. Uh, the butterfly effect, you know, essentially, uh, you know, butterfly flaps his wings to Central Park, causes a tsunami uh, in East Asia. Uh, you know, he's, he's really living in the high tones of his voice. It's really up here high. Um, as he's aged, uh, you know, he's uh, explored other parts, right? And we're gonna hear that in the next clip. If we were gonna ever refer to this as a stock impression, this is where most people's impression lives. Uh, just here, here, hi, hi, how are you? Uh, J Jeff Goldblum, uh, yes, we're not really fluctuating, right? We're staying up here higher in the higher tones. Uh, and there's a whole different part of his voice that we're not using right there. And we're going to explore that in this next clip where it's just an interview of Jeff Goldblum talking about Jurassic Park. Um, and you can really hear how his voice changes because listen to him being interviewed about it. Then listen to the clip from the movie and then how he goes back to it. And then there's another little clip in the same little thing from Thor Ragnarok where you can really hear uh, him digging in uh, to those lower tones that he does. Now, let's listen to that clip. I got a call about, oh, you could, you're going to meet, uh, Steven Spielberg wants to meet you on this. Read the book first, read that Michael Crichton book. Ian Malcolm, wow. Smart, funny, interesting character. Listen, if there's one thing the history of evolution has taught us, it's that life will not be contained. Life breaks free, it expands to new territories, and it crashes through barriers painfully, maybe even dangerously, but, uh, well, there it is. I did you know, the Grand Master with the great Taika Waititi and improvised all of that, a lot of that movie. Is he any kind of a fighter? <laughs> you take this thing out of my neck and I'll show you. Oh, listen to that. He's threatening me. Hey, Sparkles, here's the deal. If you want to get back to Ass uh, Place, Asperg. That's God! <laughs> So funny, but if you if you really listen to that, right? If you listen to that uh, in the Jurassic Park clip, right? Uh, uh, you know, life uh, will find a way. I uh, will break through, uh, you know, dangerously uh, if needs be. And he's he's again he's living up there. He's doing speed dialogue almost, where it's it's almost like this. Um, Consciousness, right? Where he's just a uh, stream of consciousness talking, uh, getting the ideas uh, out of the sky, but it's here, it's here, uh, staying there. Oh, there you go, right? Something like that. Now, when you listen to him talk about it, uh, of course, you know, the, ah, Steven Spielberg, I live, my great uh, Ian Malcolm, uh, you, know, uh, you know, dinosaur man, dinosaur. I love that too. That's one of the things that Goldblum always does is he'll sing a song that um, it, no one knows. Like, he, I think he just re references songs that that are lost by time that only he's aware of. And, uh, you know that song, uh, the trees in the sky, the trees uh, with the lollipop trees, you know the lollipop tree. Uh, nobody knows the lollipop tree song. Nobody knows that. It's not a real song, Jeff, right? Nobody knows that, stop quoting it. But that's what he'll do. He'll talk about these things. When you listen to the Jurassic Park line, uh, here, here, up here, uh, compared to uh, Sparkles, uh, if you wanna get back to As Asgard, uh, he's, Right, he's using a little bit more and there's a shape to it. It's almost like a round shape. Whereas the younger is straightforward. Uh, it's, just, it's got more uh, direction to it. Uh, uh, later, he's, ah, uh, he sparkles, ah, uh, right? There's a, there's a roundness and a shape to it. So don't be afraid to explore the Jeff Goldblum impression. You know, what, what version do you do? Uh, it's a fascinating impression. Uh, and quite frankly, I can't wait to hear your version. So now, sometimes learning other impressions are as easy as just modifying ones that you already know, like with Goldblum. So you're gonna be practicing your Goldblum. You might be already good at it just from watching this. Maybe you've already figured it out. 
So if you take that Goldblum impression and you change it just a little, because uh, here we are, here we are. Now, if you add some more nasal tones and you take it up a bit higher, it becomes Eugene Levy, right? And that's a twofer as we call it, it's a two for one. We all know Levy for his nasally delivery, amazing eyebrows and memorable roles in shows like the recent smash hit Schitt's Creek, some of my favorite movies ever, his team ups with Christopher Guest in movies like Waiting for Guffman, A Mighty Wind, and Best in Show, and of course, the American Pie franchise. So let's listen to a couple quick clips and see how we can turn our uh, Goldblum impression, very simply, uh, into Eugene Levy. It's like um, practice for the big game, you see? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like, it's like uh, banging a tennis ball against a brick wall, which can be fun. It can be fun, but it's not a game. Right. It's not a game. <laughs> Eugene Levy just makes me laugh. And as you can see from the way he talks, right? Uh, it's, not, it's not quite uh, Goldblum with the fascinating in the hands, but uh, the eyes and the, uh, the pausing are there. You know, it's not a game, it's not a game, but, and it's, it's the same type of thing where you're fluctuating between that uh, kind of here, right? Kind of here, what are we doing? We'll just tell your mother uh, that we ate the pie, Jim. Where it's kind of living right here, again, back of the throat, behind the nose, uh, and then he'll come down a, a little bit into these lower tones, because he has a lower, register as well. So, you know, it's that same type of thing that he's doing. But we're just pushing that same similar Goldblum sound a little more nasally. This next clip is from a movie that I can't possibly explain to you how much it is beloved by my wife and I. Honestly, I think we've probably watched this show a couple times a month, maybe more. Like it's definitely 15, 20 times a year. I'm not kidding. You could put it on every day and I'd watch it. It's one of my favorite movies, one of the best movies. In fact, I'd give it the blue ribbon. Let's check out a clip from Best in Show. He didn't want to dance. I, I was like dancing by myself. I did not want to dance because- Say, get uh, up, get up, Jerry. I no, kept saying, no. You know, I can't dance, I can't. I've got two left feet. I've got two left feet. <laughs> I thought he was kidding. But I wasn't. Um, I, I was born. Uh, with two uh, left feet. <laughs> if, if you've never seen Best in Show, you are missing out. It is literally one of the best movies ever made. Um, and in that scene, again, it's just that uh, that delivery uh, where it's kind of here. Uh, you know, it's 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 not quite a Johnny Carson, right? It's not really there, but it's uh, it's kind of up in that area. And then you know, I I I, I didn't want to dance. I don't want to dance. I've got two left feet. I've got two left feet. Uh, I, I, I wasn't kidding, right? It, it, it's a little softer, and it's, it's, it, his delivery is so perfectly efficient for comedy. It's so well delivered. There's ups and downs. Uh, he'll come up like this, and then he'll bring it down, Jim. So it's really fun to play with that voice. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have you uh, take that, uh, that Jeff Goldblum impression uh, that you learned this week, and we're gonna have you turn it magically into a Eugene Levy so that this week you get two for one. So hopefully that helps you get another couple impressions into your arsenal. So thank you so much for watching this episode. We have so much more planned. Honestly, I've got like another 40 episodes or whatnot mapped out already. The voices that are coming your way, it's gonna be amazing. We're gonna do episodes where we do entire cast of shows. We're gonna do theme weeks. I've got so much planned. So make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Stick around, we've got a whole bunch more. In fact, in our next episode, you're gonna love this. It's one of my favorite tough guy, confused actors. Oh my God, what are we gonna do? Maybe you should stick around and find out. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, there's a car outside, there's a car outside, where's it going, where, uh, who is it, who could be driving, it's fascinating to think, uh, who could it be, who, well, we don't know, all we know is he's interrupting our video. <laughs> now, all, all I feel like I'm doing now is a bad impersonation of myself. <laughs>